Hello, everybody. Okay, so let's um let's go over the warm up here. We'll do this together, and um yeah. So just some announcements too, just so we're on the same page here. We've got a project due Friday that we handed out on Friday this past week. So if you haven't heard that on if you weren't here on Friday or you weren't here yesterday or you haven't heard the memo, go grab it in the bin. It's not a, not a hard project. It's meant to just kind of help your grade. Self-explanatory, I haven't given you, and I don't plan to give you any class time, really, unless you have some questions about it. I'm happy to help you. Please come on by any time, and I will help you with it. I'd be glad to. Remember, like I said yesterday, I'd be happy to even look it over if you have it all done. If you want me to just kind of check it over before you officially hand it in, I'd be glad to. I want you to get a perfect score, every single person. There's no reason not to, okay? So don't not hand it in. Don't be that person, okay? All right, it's not meant to be super challenging. You do need a calculator, okay? All right, and then we have a quiz on Thursday on 9-1 and 9-2. So that's direct and inverse variation and all that stuff. And then this stuff that we're now doing, which we basically covered. My goal for today is to do an application problem after the warm-up. Um, but that's about it, you know. We're kind of coming in for ready for another quiz here. So hopefully this, is, hopefully this has been going well for you. Like I said, as you came in today, remember we have two equations that we've been talking about. We have this form. Uh, that we first talked about, y equals a over x minus h plus k. And then yesterday for the first time, we also introduced this new form of the equation, y equals ax plus b over cx plus d, which is the form of the equation that you see here, right? Don't you? Okay, so hopefully you have some notes from yesterday. If you don't, then, you know, hit up the video or get the PowerPoint or copy some notes from a friend. Something, please. Okay? Because we told you how to find the vertical and the horizontal asymptote in this new situation, right? So uh, refresh our memory. Uh, how about Jason? What's the vertical asymptote? And tell me how you get it. What, what's the, what is the vertical asymptote in this warm-up? Okay. And what do we say? Can you give me the equation? It's not just negative 2. It's x equals negative 2 is the vertical asymptote. And I don't... Now, how you got that? Can you explain it, too? How'd you get that? Um, yeah, it's always, uh, if you if you just follow him right from his notes, and the notes don't lie. We said, if you if you like this equation up here, it's negative d over c, if you're into the letters. It's negative d over c. So, did, do you see what he said? It's 4 over 2. Oh, wait. Negative 4 over 2. So, it's x equals negative 2. And you can... That's the vertical asymptote. Okay? And right away you can plot that if you want. It's a nice vertical line. Plot it as a dashed line here. The other, remember, like I said, if you're not into memorizing formulas, and I'm kind of not into memorizing formulas, um, you could also kind of reason through it. Remember the reason that this works is because this is the place that this function, my, my term was, this is the place where the function blows up, right? So think about it with me. When, when is this 0? Isn't that when this would blow up? So we're asking, when is 2x plus 4 equal to 0? And whether you have that formula memorized or not, I think we'll all come to the same conclusion. You don't even have to maybe solve this in the formal way. If you just think about it, you probably know the answer is x equals negative 2. So that is a good, I think that's maybe how I would explain the vertical asymptote, right? But I did give you that nice formula if you want to remember that it's just negative d over c, right? That's fine. But I, it should also make sense where it comes from, does it? Is everyone good? Uh, just to prove my point, uh, Guy, can you explain how to find the word last? Yeah. Yeah, which you could just look at or you could solve. Yeah. Jennifer, are you catching some of this? I know you weren't here, but maybe put that away right now just so you can see if you can absorb some of this. I know you've been out. So. I know. X equals negative 2 is the vertical asymptote. That's what we just established. X equals negative 2. We haven't, that's the one we just did. That's what VA stands for, vertical asymptote. Yeah. 
We have not done horizontal asymptote, but that's okay because Megan's going to help me out here. Megan, what's the horizontal asymptote? Do you know? And can you explain it? Yeah, it's y equals 2. And that is the horizontal asymptote. That's gotten by, what did she say, Amanda? What is the horizontal asymptote? How do you find the horizontal asymptote? How did you get y equals 2? All right, listen again. She said it. She said it. You got to listen this time. Go ahead. Say it again. A x divided by C x. So what is it, Amanda? How do you find the horizontal? Don't talk with your mouthful. Okay. I did ask you. Okay. Fair. All right. Is that cool with you, Mitzi, too? I know you've been here, but you're already catching on. I can tell. All right, good. Great. Let's graph that. Y equals 2. Horizontal line. And then label, please. You know I'm a bully. Y equals 2. X equals negative 2. With, label, please, with their equations. Don't just point to it and say, here it is. Okay. There it is. Beautiful. This is wonderful. This is... In fact, basically most of the way done already, right? Even though we haven't plotted a single point, we have a really good picture already of what this is going to look like just by having the absolutes all kind of framed up, okay? It's like, uh, you know, painting a room or something. It's all in the prep work. Painting doesn't take long. <laughs> all right, now we're ready to paint the, the beautiful masterpiece. Are you ready? What what is you don't have to actually plug it in necessarily don't actually tell me but um, you know but give me at least a, a sense for where I go next here Carlos what am I doing next what's my goal in life now okay can you give me some suggestions and okay. Those are the ones I would do too, I think, but you're welcome to try other ones. But Carlos and I, I think, are going to do those. Okay? Yeah, keep it easy. Is that good? You understand what we're about to do? Because really, I mean, we're, we're cruising here. Just on cruise control. Zero. <clears throat> if you plug zero in, you get negative a fourth or negative 0.25. So go ahead and you can plot that. Zero, comma, negative 0.25. If you plug in negative one, and please, someone else is doing this too. You guys have, a lot of our, our, you already done the world. That's good. So you're checking me either with your head or with your calculator or something. Please check me on these. I'm going to try and break through these on my head. So we get negative 5 up top over uh, 2. So that'll be negative 2.5. And then if we plug in negative 3, we get negative 13 on top. Okay. Okay. All right. What'd you get on the bottom? What is that? If you plug in negative 3 on the bottom, we get negative 2. So what is negative 13 divided by negative 2? Positive 6.5. And negative 4, tell me about that one. What do you get if you plug negative 4 in? Uh, negative 4. What will that be? Negative? 16, negative 17 over negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. All right, so that's uh, 4.25. Is that what it is? All right. Phew. All right, check, you got to check me on these. Okay, so 0 comma negative 0.25. 0 comma negative 0.25 would be like right there. Negative 1 comma 2.25. Negative 1 comma negative 2.5 would be like right there. Negative 3 comma 6.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.5 would be there. And negative 4 comma 4.25, 1, 2, 3, 4.25. All right. Question, is there a question? Somewhere? It's oh. not a question. No? All right, here we go. This is the fun part. All right, draw that nicely, beautifully. Make sure it goes bo through both points and approaches both asymptotes. Right, Jocelyn? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Questions, comments? We did it. Okay, and then, uh, 
No, you can't ask him. Marcelo, though, I can ask Marcelo. What's the domain? Um, uh, X is not equal negative two. Good job. No, no, don't tell me. Ed, you're going to tell me. What's the range? Sorry, say it one more time. Yeah, anything but two. So we say y can be anything except for two, right? And it's clear, hopefully you can see that from the picture, that y will never be two. Uh, but also, look here, right? The vertical asymptote, Once, as soon as you find the vertical asymptote, you know the domain. As soon as you figure out what the horizontal asymptote is, you know the range. You see, they're identical. It's just with a little slash in between, okay? That will always happen on this. I hear some side conversations. Everyone good? Do you have a question? I'm here. Natalia? It's A over C. Good question. Good question. All right, let's, uh, let's look at the home for today. Is to do one application problem. That's it. Okay? So here it goes. Oh, this is it, huh? This is the one, right here. It's a fundraising project by the Mac Club. Woo! Sounds awesome to me. Jonathan, you're in the front row. Read that for us if you can. Can you read it from where you're at? Mm -hmm. yeah. For a fundraising project, your math club is publishing a fractal. A fractal. Fractal art calendar. The cost of the digital images and the permission to use them is $850. In addition to these one-time charges, the unit cost of printing each calendar is $3.25. There are only two numbers. There are only two numbers up there. That's very astute of you to notice that. I see that awkward. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, in fact, actually, if you people are writing stuff down, and, and I would like you to write some of this example down somehow, maybe you don't write every word. Maybe you just try and capture the most important information, and that would be a good place to start. Numbers. The numbers are important, and let's say what they mean, maybe, okay? This 850, someone describe if you're reading the problem in English. Tell me, summarize, tell me what that means. What's that? That's the limit? Yeah, so that's, like, can you think of, this is, th there's actually a name, but I call them one-time charges here. Um, in, so this kind of idea comes up a lot in economics, right? So we have a lot of names for it. Call them one-time fees or something, one-time charges. You call it your startup cost. Have you heard it called that? Or your, right, so it's like or sometimes people call it your overhead, right? Okay, yeah, we haven't gotten to 325 yet. What's the 320? So 850 is like, do you ever pay that again? No. The answer is no. You only pay that one time to obtain the, like, the rights to the photos and whatever. What about the 325? What does that mean? What does that mean? What is it? Yeah, that's the amount you have to continue paying if you want to make another calendar, right? You, every time you make a calendar, every time you make a calendar, you don't have to pay the 850 again, but you do have to pay 325. Why? Well, because we're going to print it on like big, really nice quality cardstock paper, and we're going to print it in like high resolution, full color. It's going to be beautiful. This calendar is just going to be gorgeous. Okay. 
So every time we print one, it is going to cost money to print one also. So far so good? So sometimes, in a, in like in economics, you might call this the fixed cost and the variable cost, something like that. Or like I said, sometimes people call this the 850, the overhead. Have you heard these terms before? Okay. You're going to start a lemonade stand, you need to like get a stand. You need to get like a pitcher and a chair and a cute hat or something, right? But you don't ever have to buy those things again. Those are all fixed costs. Yes? Okay. What would be examples of variable costs for a lemonade stand? Uh, lemons. Lemons. Water. Water. Uh, ice. Ice. Cups. Cups. Sugar. Cups. Right? Stuff like that that you're going to have to continually <laughs> pay for every day. Yeah, maybe advertising you pay for you know, once a month or something. Because you're... You advertise this lemonade stand. It's like a legit lemonade stand. <laughs> okay, here we go. So no, but we're not doing lemonade stand. We're doing, we're complete dorks. We're math club people. Okay, write a model that gives the total cost. So before we write a model of doing that, I just have a question for you. What would it cost to produce ten calendars? Right? Tell me. Forget about the function. Forget about all this other math stuff here. If I just told you this information, hey, cost eight fifty. And then it costs three twenty-five per calendar. How much would it cost total, 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 total? What do I have to write a check for, please, to produce in the end ten calendars? How much is that going to cost me? Tell me how you get it. I don't even know what the answer. Wait, wait. Is it going to be thirty-two dollars and fifty cents per day? Three, thirty-two dollars and fifty cents. For ten calendars plus the eight. Plus the eight fifty, okay? And so whatever that is. So, I think what you just did is three twenty-five times ten. Plus 850, am I right? Yeah. All right, so that'd be 882 dollars and 50 and 50 cents. Okay, cool. So what is it? 882.50. All right, pretty cool. Does that make sense? Could you do this again? If I asked you, what would it cost? What would it? What would it cost to produce 100 calendars? Could you figure that out too? What would you do? You'd just do the same thing except you'd have an 100 here instead of 10. So in general, how much does it cost to produce total cost to produce X calendars? You mean 3.25? Times X. 850, yeah, exactly, right? So is everyone clear on that's our magic formula? If you want to figure out how much it costs total to produce 100 calendars, there it is. Right, you plug in 100. If you want to see how much it costs to produce 1,000, plug 1,000 in. All right, now the next concept is a pretty important one in economics. It's the idea of average cost. And uh, we'll come to that, um, again, using a concrete approach. I'd like to know, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like to know? For 10 calendars, you said that it costs $882.50. But I'd like to know... I'd like to know how much it costs per calendar. 325. Oh. How many calendars did we make? 10. 10, and it cost us a total of $882.50. So, so how much is it? You just divide by 10. So we just divide, we just, it's no big deal, Mr. Chase. Just divide it by 10. Right? Doesn't it say? Isn't that how much it would cost per calendar? So my question is, if you just made 10 calendars, and it cost you this amount of money, how much did it cost on average per calendar? And that's exactly right. We just need to divide this by 10. So how much does it cost per calendar? 88.25, right? All right, so what does that mean? We have to, I mean, really, if that's how much it costs per calendar, if that's how much it costs per calendar, if you're only going to make start this fundraiser and you're only going to make 10 calendars, then what might you want to sell them at? What price? Yeah, you might want to sell them per calendar. You might want to sell them for, them for like 90 bucks or maybe 100 bucks. Yeah, that calendar would have been made. Yeah, this is terrible. Calendar. Now, that, that is but due, though, in large part to the fact that you only made 10 calendars. How could, we, how could we make this a better deal for us and our consumers? Maybe we make more calendars. So just for fun, um, plug in 100. Tell me what you get. What do you get when you plug in 100? Tell me, I'd like to know. What is it, 1,000 what? $1,175 is what it costs to produce 100 calendars. 
Okay, but then what is the average cost per calendar <laughs> of 100 calendars? Well, that's not hard. I'm using nice numbers here. So what does that come out to be? Ah, now, okay, that's, that's getting a little better. $11.75 is what it costs per calendar on average. So maybe we have an idea. Of, see, you see how this computing the average cost is actually not just kind of a fun little activity. It's also like... This is actually important because we're going to maybe set the price based on our calculation. How much might, might you sell them at? This, if, if it costs you, if we're going to make 100 calendars, it costs you 11.75 on average well, per one. Maybe we sell them for 12.50, or we sell them for maybe 15. Yeah, come on. Oh, then. you're pushing it, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, you got some. Uh, you know, your parents have <coughs> rich friends. You know, and you're going to put them. They're going to take them to work and put them in the office, or right? You right. know how this I works. I love that show. Okay. I meant you know, like the good. Quick. I know. Okay. But I All right. <laughs> Uh, would you like to make more calendars? You, you can. <clears throat> so in general, how do, we, how do we compute the average cost? We'll call this A of X. I would like to know, I'm really interested in computing this for lots of different X values, right? Because I, I want to analyze this. I want to keep doing this. So I'd love to have a function that just I can plug X into. Well, we already kind of have it written, haven't we? What is it? It's this. And then you divide by x. Isn't that what we keep doing? All right, so this is beautiful. This is called the average cost function. Okay? And if you plug in 10, you get 88.50 or whatever we got. If you plug in 100, you get 11.75. Right? So this is a very useful function. Cool. Uh, the next question is the one we've just answered already. So I'll try and remember what we got. The average cost of 10 calendars per calendar was, I think, 88. Was it 88.50? Oh, 88.25, rather. Okay. 88.25. So we were like, I think we're going to make more than, uh, I think our conclusion was we need to make more than 10 calendars. Uh, 100 is not bad. You know, we said, okay, that's going to cost us a lot per calendar. It was 11.75, right? Okay, that's, it's not bad, but I think even so, I mean, we've got a big school. Maybe we can, uh, I think we can probably sell more than that. What happens if we do 1,000? Someone tell me what 1,000 is. Or better yet, tell me what it is for a million. I'd really like to know where, how low can we get this number? <laughs> Pay attention, John. I'd like to, I'd really like to know. This number keeps going down. How low can it go? How low can it go? I should never say that. It's my okay. How how low can the average cost go? Can we keep pushing it down? Everyone do this right now. All right, hey. Thank you. Plug in a thousand, or plug in better yet, like I said, plug in ten thousand, and tell me what you get into our average cost function. Here it is again. Plug in a thousand. Do it right now. Stop talking and do this work. Go, ready, go. Plug in a thousand. What are you discovering? It's going to be like... It goes up. It's going to be like 4000 I still don't know. 4000 If you plug in a thousand or a million even calendars, what are we getting? Your average always gets smaller. It does get smaller, but where does it... Does it always get smaller? What's happening? I mean, it does, but... What do we get? What do we get as X approaches infinity? Jennifer, you have got to stop talking. What do we get? What is what is the average cost approach? You should be getting something really close to three point three point two five. The average cost as X approaches infinity, Jennifer. I said three. Yes, I know. I don't want you to say anything right now. Okay. All right. Three twenty-five. Why does that make sense? Even if we make, or we're making millions and millions of calendars. Why does it make sense that our average cost can't ever quite go below three twenty-five? Because we still have to pay three twenty-five per calendar. Because we still have to pay three twenty-five per, per calendar, don't we? What does this feel like? It gets as close as we like to three twenty-five, but not below it. What does this feel like? Absolutely. And what is the asymptote of this function? 
right? Isn't it 3.25 divided by 1? It's 3.25, yeah. So it should make sense from an intuitive standpoint, but also from our analysis of a rational function. <laughs> All right, you, have, you do have a word problem like this on your homework tonight, so please, please do it, and please do the graphs as well. Did you get your homework written down? Okay, or circle the problems on your homework sheet, something.